everyone. I'm a CA81 linear programming lecture A. Uh, this lecture we're going to talk about simplex method dealing with uh, bounded variables. And the content is coming out of a uh, handout page 42 to page 46. First we're talking about a our standard model. The linear programming, uh, linear program with uh, bounded variables can be written as a z, uh, uh, maximization. So this, throughout this chapter, all our problems are soon to be maximization problem. Um, <coughs> and, and we have a constraint AX equal to B and X is between a lower and an upper bound. And this type of problem, we call this, uh, linear program, uh, bounded variable linear programs, and sometimes also we referring these uh, lower and upper bound as a box constraint. And basically your decision variable is box in a certain region uh, value. <coughs> we can always consider this type of problem with the lower and upper bound using explicit constraint and put it into the A matrix. In this case, the A matrix, instead of uh, dealing with the N by N matrix as a basis matrix, and we're going to deal with the N plus, uh, N plus 2N uh, times N plus 2N. It's greatly increased the sizes of our model. So for these type of box constraint or bounded variables, we should using a specialized algorithm to deal with these bound, up, lower and upper bound. In the standard linear program, and <coughs> the non-basic variable usually just uh, fix their value at the zero. So that's basically the lower bound of zero. However, in the bounded uh, variable simplex method, we <coughs> the non-basic variable can be uh, fixed either at the lower bound or their upper bound. So the decision vector x can be partitioned into three parts. The first part is the basic variable xb. The second part will be the non-basic variable at their lower bound, called XLNL. And the third part will be the non-basic variables at their upper bound, uh, X and U. And the basic feasible solution, when then we'll partition the coefficient matrix, uh, constraint matrix A, into three parts as well. A non-singular ba working basis, we'll call it B, and two, we're going to have a non-basic column corresponding to the variable at the lower bound, called NL, this part. And also the column corresponding to the current non-basic variable at their upper bound. All right. And the linear system at AX equal to B, our constraint can be rewritten as B times X, B plus NL times XNL plus NU times XNU equals to the right hand side B. And multiply both sides by B inverse and moving these two into the right hand side as well. Okay, so XB, the current basic uh, variable value, equals to B inverse times XB uh, times B minus B inverse times NL times XNL minus B inverse times NU times XNU. In the standard linear program, these two terms equal to zero because non-basic variable always take a value of zero. But in the sponsor variable simplex method, the lower and upper bound may not be zero in that case. So we have to include in the calculation here. So that's more of a com um, complication part. Okay. And by setting the N XNL into their lower bound LN, by setting X and U equals to UN, then we can calculate my current basic solution equals to, we call it beta. We're gonna use this beta bar quite a bit, okay, later on, so we're using a, a symbol. Uh, beta bar represent the current basic solution equals to B inverse times B minus B inverse times NL times LN, which is lower bound and minus B inverse times NU times UN. So the current solution X can be uh, with XB, XNL, XNU equals to XB, which is this part, which is the beta. Um, <coughs> and then XNN equals to LN, 
and xn u equals to un. And of course, the basic variable is between their lower and upper bound as well as the feasible part. Look at the reduced cost, we call the zj minus zj. And we can first partition our cost coefficient vector into CB, CNL, and CNU based on the similar partition. Then my objective function value, z hat, which is current objective function value, we're usually using z hat to represent, equal to CB transpose times XB, and plus C, uh, CNL transpose times XNL, plus CNU transpose times XNU. Again, in the origin, uh, standard linear programming problem, these two terms equal to zero. However, in the bounded simplex method, the XNL and XNU are not necessarily zero in this case. <coughs> now we're substituting the expression of uh, XB, <coughs> the current XB, by the equation we have from the last slide. And then we can have the current uh, objective function value z hat equal to CB transpose times B inverse times B minus, actually this part is the ZJ minus CJ times XNL, and also the ZJ minus CJ times XNU, okay, in the matrix form, okay, for all the ZJ minus CJ, for those variables in the lower bound, ZJ minus CJ times those variables time, uh, at the upper bound. And we replace the XNL equal to LN, replace XNU equal to UN, then we can rewrite my objective, current objective function value. So these uh, presentation just trying to show you how difference, okay, from the uh, current, uh, current basic solution point of view, current objective function point of view, and then how the objective functions could change uh, based on the non-basic variable currently at the lower bound or currently at the upper bound. Again, we stress again, the <coughs> this actually depends on zj minus cj. Okay, zj minus cj. So if we look at here, <coughs> for this portion, if the current variables uh, non-basic variable at the lower bound, for example, at the, their lower bound. And then, if the zj minus cj, okay, is <coughs> negative, okay, is negative. So, here, currently at the lower bound, I can increase this value with a negative zj minus cj with another negative sign of, over here. So, negative times positive will be negative with that negative will actually increase my objective function value since we're maximizing. On the other hand, if the current non-basic variable is at the upper bound value, it could reduce its value if the zj minus cj term is positive. So again, the positive times negative movement of decreasing will be negative with that negative sign and from I could improve my objective function value. So later on, we're going to use this relationship to developing a, a rules to uh, determine the entering variables. So here we just formally present, it's actually based on the zj minus cj, and for those variables on the lower bound, and for those variables on the upper bound. So if we're going to move value from one of those non-basic category, and then we need to, depends on the sign of the zj minus cj. Okay, again, the current basic solution, we're going to, using a beta bar as a, <coughs> as a representation to say this is the current uh, basic solution and we'll, how's that going to change if we change one of the non-basic variable. Okay, we define two index set. ZL, uh, JL, and JU. JL are the, all the indexes are the current uh, non-basic variable at the lower bound. JU represent all the indexes and for those current non-basic variable at their upper bound. 
with all these definition and presentation, we can start uh, talk about how to determine the entering variable. Again, the y over here is just b inverse times aj, okay? yj equal to b inverse times aj, like before. Next, we, let's talk about the optimality condition for the maximization problem, okay? And first, look at, the, as I described if you, uh, in the last uh, slide, for those current non-basic variable at the lower bound, I can increase its value if their zj minus cj is greater than zero. And for those, okay, for those current non-basic variable at the upper bound, if the zj minus cj is negative, I can improve my objective function. Uh, I can no longer improve my objective function. For these two cases uh, happen, the current basic solution is already optimal. I have no chance to improve my objective function value anymore. So the current solution on hand is optimal. It's the same thing. If zj minus cj is greater than zero, for all the ones in lower bound, zj minus cj is less than zero for all the ones in the upper bound. And the current basic feasible solution is going to be the unique optimal feasible solution. If for one of the non-basic variable xk is corresponding zj minus C, uh, zk minus ck equal to zero, and this is the situation we have a degeneracy, and therefore we have a multiple optimal solution, and like we introduced before. This slide trying to show you how we're going to determine the entering variable. Like we said before, <coughs> the entering variable, uh, sorry, the non-basic variable right now can have two situations, one at the lower bound, one at the upper bound. The one at the lower bound, actually, uh, if it's uh, possible or beneficial, they could increase their value. And one, those non-basic variable at their upper bound, if it's beneficial, it can decrease the value based on their corresponding zj minus cj. So see if we can come up with a certain uh, result. If the current uh, feasible solution is not optimal, then we can choose one, either increase one of the uh, <coughs> variable currently at the lower bound and increase its value in if the zk minus ck is less than zero. So that means it's beneficial. We will increase my objective function value by increase the current non-basic variable. On the other hand, if the current non-basic variable is at the upper bound, is upper bound, and then if the, the corresponding zk minus ck is greater than zero, then we can decrease this value to improve my objective function. So those are the two situations I can introduce current non-basic variable into the basis. As before, we're going to choose the one who has most beneficial, basically, is the greatest rate of change in objective function, then that's. So th we're going to determine the zk minus ck, xk, entering the variable based on the negative zj minus cj for those ones in the lower bound, and, and the maximum of zj minus cj for those in the upper bound. For example, if the current basic variables in uh, non-basic variable at the lower bound and the ZJ, zk minus ck is less than zero, so negative zj minus cj will be positive. For those currently at the upper bound, and for those zk minus ck is greater than zero, and this is going to be positive. So we're going to choose the, the uh, best uh, maxima one, and therefore xk entering the basis, whoever picked the maxima. 